Starfield, the next big Bethesda RPG, covered by all media and their mothers, and now finally also covered by me. We'll have a look at most graphical settings in the game to see if we can get this game running at 4K at at least 60 FPS. Take that Xbox Series X players, they only have 30 FPS. But they will probably say, we have HDR, take that PC players. Fair enough. Um, welcome to Hankus Gaming, guess who I am, and let's have a look. Starting off real quick with HDR. By default, HDR looks a bit washed out, I think. The auto HDR function from Windows doesn't make the game look like an HDR game at all. So I went to my new favorite site, Nexus Mods, to find a fix for this. Now apparently running the Game Pass version of the game, your options are a bit more limited than when running the Steam version of the game. But I found Almost HDR, which is a reshade mod which does the job well I think. All footage you see in this video will be using this mod. Now when you install reshade, make sure to select the game launch helper.exe to make it work on your Game Pass version of the game. Otherwise you can select starfield.exe but you might want to have a look at other mods. In an interview, Todd Howard mentioned Bethesda optimized the game for PC, but that it's a real next-gen title. I think I played games that looked better and ran at a higher FPS with things like ray tracing enabled, where this game does not even feature ray tracing, but I'm counting on modders here. But this game is massive in scope of course, lots of worlds, lots of items to keep track of, lots of potatoes, so I think his statement is fair enough. But I bought my PC fairly recently, so 4K at 60fps should be possible, and as footage shows, it is, without graphics taking too much arrows to the knees. Please bear in mind that I sometimes dip just under 60fps, but I'm running OBS Studio in the background for recording all this footage, and that eats up about 15% I think. So this is proof that the game can run at 60fps in 4K, but let's have a look what our compromises are to get this nice fluent gameplay. Starting off by comparing the low and ultra preset. Here we see that low runs at about 63 to 66 FPS and ultra runs at about 46 to 47 FPS. So by switching from the ultra preset to low, you win about 28% in FPS. That seems quite nice. Looking at the scene, I think we will be able to turn things down quite a bit without sacrificing too much in graphics. On the low preset, some shadows seem a little bit brighter, but all shadows seem to be in place and still looking okay to be honest. I still see volumetric lighting, textures are all the same, and spoiler alert, there is no texture setting, so these will always look the same. But okay. This is just for reference to get an idea of what to expect or what to look for. Let's dive into the settings separately and have a look. So then let's start with shadow quality. And starting off at the ultra level, at the top of the screen we have some shadows of trees. These were the shadows furthest away, so we can use this to compare shadow distance. Also the pillar at the bottom of the screen has some finer shadow lines to have a look at and we have some nice trees and mountains casting shadows on the lake, so enough to look at. 34 FPS in this shot. On the high shadow quality level we get 35 FPS, so just 1 FPS more, which is about 3%. Shadow distance seems to be the same and the shadows themselves are a little bit softer looking, but they are still all there and not looking bad at all. Going to the medium quality, and I think it's all the same, still 35 FPS, shadows still look great, still a little bit softer, don't know if they look softer than on high. The distance of the shadow doesn't decrease at all. At the top of the screen we still see those tree shadows, and at the bottom of the screen we still see the lines from the pillar shadows, so looking okay. Going to the low setting then, we see that we go too low. See the shadow of the pillar below? I think it gets too blurry. The shadows almost fade away. Shadow distance however is still the same. Performance is still also the same at 35 FPS. Think we'll stick with medium shadow quality for our optimized settings. 
at medium however we do get a little bit of shadow pop in but we do want to run the game at a higher fps so we have to make some sacrifices i think and the pop in is present but it's not that bad i think over here 43 44 fps on ultra that pop in is gone but running at 41 42 fps so medium seems to give us about 5% increase in this scene. Keeping medium and try to live with the pop-in. Indirect lighting, so light bouncing from surfaces and such. The menu does a bad job of telling you where to look or what settings do, but that's why I'm here for you man. Wink. You can't see the wink so I have to tell you. But looking at indirect lighting side by side. Now I walked around a whole bunch in the game switching this setting at various places and I saw no difference. Looking at them side by side however, I think Ultra maybe looks a little bit darker than Medium but I don't see a real difference between Ultra and Medium. But on Low we see a line crawling about and I don't want lines crawling about. So for our optimized settings we'll go for Medium. And I'll hope I'll get a few frames in the wind at some other locations. Reflections up next. Now I'm fairly new in YouTube land and in this video I've tried to add some movement in frames to make the video look less dull. But I moved the camera way faster in one frame than in the other frame so you're getting some awful slow motion there in order for me to try and match the movement speeds when editing the video. Sorry about that. But we're keeping reflections on high. I think reflections on high look okay in the game, but they don't look okay on medium and definitely not on low. Probably I'm a bit spoiled with all those ray traced reflections in other games of late. Also this game doesn't use screen space reflections. The upside of this is that reflections don't disappear when the object it should reflect disappears out of your sight. The game uses cube maps, so invisible blocks with textures that take care of the reflections. Now the downside of using these cube maps is that you have to align them properly otherwise your reflections will look weird. And that's the case here. See that tall blue building? Um, the bank I guess it is. Its reflection is completely off which makes it look really weird. Now to be honest, do you see that much big water surfaces in this game? Here in New Atlantis you do but in other places not so much probably. So maybe it's not such a big issue, but it looks weird here. Settings however don't make a difference for this, I just wanted to complain. And I want to complain a little bit more about the water, here reflections seem to be missing. It looks bad. Putting this side by side to the ship interior, I almost find it hard to believe that these are the same game. How can one thing look so bad and the other so good? Ok, quitting my rant now because this doesn't really matter for the settings comparison now does it. So quitting my whining and having a look at volumetric lighting, now the outlier in the four settings is the low one again. It clearly is missing the brightness of the sun which the other settings have. Also medium does seem to have an ever so slightly better performance of, again, 1 FPS. So we'll stick with the medium setting for that 3% improvement over Ultra. Traveling to Neon to have a look at the crowd density. And starting off at high, having a CPU load of about 24%. I wanted to have a look at the CPU load because I thought that this setting would mostly impact that. But maybe I'm testing it wrong? Because when we switch to medium, I don't see less people walking around in Neon. And also switching to low, I still see about the same amount of people and the same amount of load on my CPU. I tested this setting by setting the crowd density and then reloading my save. But maybe cloud density only switches when you enter an area, not when you load your save. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. But keeping the setting at high for now, because 24 or 25% of CPU load seems okay and seems to have room for more people in the world, if that would occur. Okay, GTAO. Does that mean the same as GTFO? Get the ambient occlusion out of here. Probably what we're going to do by setting it to low, but let's have a look. And by the way, it stands for Ground Truth Ambient Occlusion. I had to look that up, the GT part. The ambient occlusion part was clear to me and was mentioned by Starfield itself. Now I see a difference here, but it's a very small one. 
on low around the orange pillar the shadows are just a little bit lighter or less pronounced. It gives us quite a few FPS extra though, 53 on low versus 47 on ultra, so we get a win of about 11% on low. Now to check if everything looked okay, I walked around a bit in neon and I think everything holds up nicely. I'm not missing any shadows or finding that objects seems to be floating or are not really grounded in the world. So going for that 11% win and low for this setting. A small note here however, later on in New Atlantis I did find some buggy shadows with GTAO at low. But still keeping it at low for those extra FPS and that buggy shadows I saw they were only on New Atlantis, I didn't see them anywhere else where I went. Up next is grass quality. One of the easier ones to test I must say. For some settings I really had to look carefully where I could measure them or where I saw the effect clearly. Now, grass quality, you can see the effect clearly on a world where there is a lot of grass. And here we see the differences. The ultra setting clearly has the most full grassland. I think medium and low really take away the experience of being on a lush green planet. High still looks pretty convincing, but in this case I'm going to trade in my 3% performance and sticking with the ultra setting. Time to look at contact shadows. And what are contact shadows actually? Well, these are shadows where NPCs come in contact with you and push you around when you try to look at those shadows. No, it are shadows where objects or smaller parts of objects come in contact with the ground. I had to look around to find a good example, but this cone does. Normal shadows are set to ultra in this scene, but on the low contact shadow setting we don't see the contact shadows anymore, only the normal shadows. To prevent that I would suggest medium for our settings, as I don't really see the difference in quality between ultra high and medium, but I do see that medium performs best with 45 fps, which is about 5% better than on ultra. BRS then, or Variable Rate Shaders. Now to be honest I don't really know what to look for, but in this scene I get a minimal performance win by setting VRS to on and I see absolutely nothing different in quality. So let's set it on. Now the biggest difference in performance in this game will come from upscaling I think. So that's what we'll look at in a second. Often games these days have quality levels to choose from, so you'll see for example DLSS quality or FSR performance mode. Starfield doesn't have these quality levels, or at least not when I was making this video. But Starfield has a scalar slider. Which is probably better because you can set it to whatever percentage you want. But I wanted to have a look at the more traditional levels. But what are these actually? And Sarah, how nice of you to join us. Searching for the quality levels, I found a somewhat older article of NVIDIA, but in this article they include a video, and in this video they tell you what these levels are. So 66% is quality mode and 50% is performance mode. At least in DLSS, but I think FSR will probably use the same. And of course, if this is still the case, maybe definitions of these levels have changed over time, or maybe developers can choose for themselves, I don't know, but however, I will keep the percentages mentioned in this video. So I will we'll test performance as 50% scale and quality as 66% scale. Although this table talks about 67% and I haven't calculated it myself, so oh well. By the way, this table is cool, it shows you the internal render resolution and it shows some other suggestions of levels. Which you can of course calculate yourself, but I'm a lazy man, so I like this table. Now here we have it, three resolution scalers. DLSS here is achieved with Pure Darks mod, which I will link down below. Please also note that with an upcoming patch, Bethesda will add DLSS themselves, as well as a FOV slider, just so you know it. But on the performance level, the scalers are performing about the same, they are all around 70 FPS. CAS or CAS seems to perform a little bit better, but looks a little bit less sharp, I think. And on the quality level, CAS seems to lose a little bit of lighting info, but DLSS and FSR2 have some heavy artifacting, 
which I did not see on the performance level, which I find is a bit weird. I play all my games on the performance level usual of DLSS and I think this still looks great, so we'll stick with 50% level or performance level for our optimized settings. I forgot to measure the exact original FPS, but I tested this after recording and I got 63 FPS running without scaler and 91 FPS with the scaler set to DLSS 50%, so an increase of about 30%. Of course, this was measured without OBS running because I didn't record it for this video. So it makes a huge difference, 30%. But those are all the settings I had a look at. Now let's measure these against Ultra without dynamic resolution VSR or scaling enabled. Then it's running at about 30 to 40 FPS, right? It looks great, but let's switch to our optimized settings and then in New Atlantis we are running somewhere between 60 and 70 FPS. So that's about 57% better than Ultra, although we did cheat a bit by turning off the scaling in Ultra. Now in New Atlantis I noticed some flickering shadows, which seems to be caused by the GTAO being set to low. While in New Atlantis you could consider turning the GTAO to Ultra, but I would only do it in New Atlantis or when you see these flickering shadows. In other worlds I didn't have a problem with it. Now of course for this video we wanted 4K at 60fps, but you could always consider running at 30fps and maybe then you can increase some detail settings if you like. Or you could play at 1440p with higher settings. But to be honest, wouldn't it then just be like playing on an Xbox Series X or Series S? Now hopefully performance will be improved a bit with upcoming patches. Also I hope HDR will be implemented properly with an upcoming patch. And of course with an upcoming patch DLSS will be implemented so you won't have to use mods anymore. And maybe then frame generation will be available if you have the luxury of a card that supports it of course. However that is it for my look at Starfield and I didn't even complain about the loading screens. Now if you like me not complaining about the loading screens and only complaining about the water and reflections, please leave a like. I am currently on a holiday in Ireland. Uh, so I had to rush to get this video done in time, but I'll have to rush to get the next video done in time as well, which will be about Phantom Liberty. Really looking forward to that one. I already had a look at Cyberpunk 2077, but I'll revisit the game, see if the 2.0 patch has anything interesting in it, DLSS 3.5 for example, and I'll have a look if we can get Phantom Liberty itself of course running in 4K in 60fps. Well, I'll see you again in two weeks, now if I don't make it in time it'll be three weeks, hope you'll bear with me, but thank you for watching, until the next one. How do?